Ah, what's up athletes, I'm Daytree, and if you ever felt tight or jammed on your serve, keep watching this video all the way till the end, because today we're gonna be covering that perfect serve contact position that's gonna get you feeling that clean, crisp, fluid contact time and time again. We're gonna break this video up into three sections. We're gonna talk about the ball, the racket, and finally, the hitting arm configuration. This is part one of the serve contact point series. So if you're ready for our future serve videos, as well as this video, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification below. And without further ado, let's get into the video. How high and how far into the court you're making contact with the ball is a big factor that's gonna ultimately determine both your power and your consistency. So first of all, making contact higher, of course, is gonna decrease our margins of error, allowing us to hit harder with more consistency. And the exact height is gonna depend on how tall you are, how long your arms are, as well as how high off the ground you're launching. But before you go out and you start jumping in the air and reaching up as high as you can, I want you to really focus in on the key hitting arm positions first because there's a more important element here that most players miss. I see too often when I tell my players to get into their contact position, they'll stand straight up and, and reach their arm all the way up and it'll, it'll look kind of like this. You'll see my wrist is pretty much completely straight. My racket head is completely facing up toward the sky and my arm is about raised about 180 degrees from my side and that puts my shoulder in a very impinged position. Not only does this increase my risks for injury, but it doesn't allow me to generate topspin, which is the most important element for serve consistency. It allows you to dip that ball down into the service box, allowing you to swing out with, with all the confidence you need. And this is why you'll see servers with good, good kickers not necessarily making contact in a higher position, but actually making contact lower so they can brush the ball higher and generate that topspin. Along with this, making contact further into the court is gonna have the same effect, decreasing your margins of error, allowing you to increase your consistency. And a notable example of this is uh, someone like John Isner. He's you know, already super tall, but along with that, if you look at him from the side, he's actually making contact about four feet into the court. And this allows him to really increase his margins, generating crazy speed with crazy angles. So I want you to shift your mindset from that of trying to hit the ball as high as you can or trying to hit the ball hard to really focusing on achieving a contact position that's comfortable and allows you to be fluid throughout your entire motion and you'll see the power start to come more naturally. The first key to achieving that consistent topspin on your serve is in the racket position. Now, most players think that on a flat serve, uh, you know, you're supposed to hit the ball almost like, like it's a knuckleball, devoid of any spin. But that pretty much destines the ball to either sail five feet long or go into the bottom of the net. And instead, according to a study by Dr. Bruce Elliott et al., you wanna actually generate both side spin and top spin on your serves. Now, Topson is gonna allow you to stop thinking about aiming your flat serves into the box. You never wanna be thinking about aiming the ball uh, into you know, that tiny space. That's when that space starts to decrease and look smaller and smaller as you get tighter in your matches. Uh, before, before I started uh, learning this concept, every tight serve, I would just toss it up and dink it over. At a higher level, they're just gonna crush it. So instead, you wanna focus on hitting up on the ball, which is gonna allow you to generate that topspin and therefore start swinging out with confidence as you go through the ball and generate that spin progressively. Now the side spin element is actually gonna come from uh, this move we're gonna cover soon called internal rotation from your shoulder and your forearm. As a natural byproduct of this internal rotation, uh, your racket is gonna go outward to your right side. And this outward to your right racket path is going to, to cause side spin on the ball just because of the frictional force of the strings. So here are the key points that I want you to think about in terms of your racket position. First of all, uh, from the side view, you want your racket to, to be uh, at least uh, straight up or slightly lean forward about 20 degrees. Uh, I see so many players with the racket facing up and you know, of course, if your racket strings are facing up even somewhat, you're not gonna be able to get that topspin on the ball. And second of all, 
from the front or back view, you want your racket to be tilted about 20 to 30 degrees on contact. Uh, most players, rackets will be pointing straight up. And the problem with this is now with your racket straight up, it's pretty much impossible to generate any topspin uh, actively unless you do some sort of like, like really weird jackknife motion. And instead, if your racket is tilted to the side, now just like a forehand where you're, you're hitting over the top of the ball, you're making contact over the top, as you extend through and rotate your arm over, you're gonna naturally generate easy topspin. While on your serve, it's the same thing. You want your rack to be slightly tilted, and then once you focus on internally rotating that shoulder, as we'll cover, uh, your topspin is gonna come naturally. And now that we've covered the optimal racket position, let's go over the key hitting arm configurations. <sighs> All right, next up we're covering four movements in the hitting arm position. We're gonna cover the shoulder, the elbow extension, uh, the internal rotation, we kind of harpered on that already, but it's called the long axis rotation coming from the unitary internal rotation of your shoulder as well as your forearm. And lastly, we're gonna cover a little bit of the action from the wrist. So starting with the shoulder, uh, your, your shoulder can actually move in like so many different directions. It's one of the most complex joints in the human body. Uh, but to simplify things, we're gonna cover two dimensions here. Uh, we're gonna cover your arm raising straight up to the side, which is called uh, shoulder abduction, and your arm coming forward in this uh, horizontal plane. Think of it like you're, you're giving someone a big bear hug, and this is called shoulder horizontal adduction. And these are two movements that are gonna be critical on your serve for generating a comfortable position, as well as transferring the racketed speed uh, or the force from your legs to your trunk uh, all the way up into the racket. So first off, you want roughly 110 degrees of your arm raising up to your side. And you know, I see too many players raising their arm all the way until they feel this tightness in the shoulder. And if you do try to get into this position and continue to serve uh, hard, you can actually end up really severely injuring your shoulder. So you wanna avoid that. So instead, you wanna find a comfortable position in your hitting arm, and from there, adjust your torso, tilt your shoulders over to your left side until you reach a comfortable contact position that's over about your shoulder or over your head. Now the second movement is gonna be this horizontal shoulder adduction. And this is gonna be about 20 degrees or more at least. And uh, you know, I, I don't see this as often, but play, some players have too much of this adduction going on where your chest is to the side and your, your arm is basically uh, coming forward to your body. Uh, and you know, this, this doesn't feel intuitive. This feels uh, like it's a weak position. If you do have this problem, uh, it probably has more to do with the way that you're accelerating up into the ball as well as your, how you're uh, starting your acceleration up to the ball. What I see more often from players though is a lack of this adduction going on. Uh, and, and this has to do with maybe you feel yourself over rotating your hips or, or your chest straight to the net at contact. And this is because one of the factors is you don't have enough adduction from the shoulder. Now, the, the biggest problem I see with this is if your arm is straight to your side, you're actually literally not able to use uh, as strong of muscles. Your, your pec major right here, this upper chest muscle, is actually unable to, to support this, this movement anymore. And instead, you're gonna be using more of this frontal deltoid here. That's not only gonna cause stress to it, but you're gonna overall feel like it's a, a weaker in a weaker position, it's not as stable. And so just the simple move of taking your shoulder, uh, taking your elbow, up and forward uh, through the shoulder adduction is gonna allow you to feel more comfortable and you're gonna be able to start generating more power without feeling like you're producing uh, as much effort into the shot. All right, next up, the elbow extension is the next critical element. And what I see too often at the rec level is uh, this bent elbow position on, on contact. And this is problematic because First of all, it doesn't allow you to use the uh, internal rotation from the shoulder and the forearm. And so to compensate, you're gonna use elbow extension and the, the muscle that's responsible for extending this elbow is the tricep. Now, let's just for a second compare this tricep muscle to the, the, the muscles that you'd be otherwise using with the internal rotation, uh, like your lats, your chest, right? It's just incomparable, the amount of strength and stability you feel from the two moves. 
And so, you know, if you, if you do, if you have recorded yourself and you have this bent elbow position, uh, chances are you feel like it takes a lot more effort to generate power on the serve. Maybe you feel a little bit uh, a, a lack of control and it just overall feels tight. Well, if you look at the pros, if you, every single one of them pretty much will be fully extended at the elbow before contact. And from here, they're gonna use the next move of, of the long axis rotation of the shoulder and forearm that's gonna internally rotate to drive this racket forward to contact. Now the exact amount of internal rotation uh, is gonna depend on what serve variation you're trying to hit. But on all serves, this internal rotation is gonna contribute to uh, a, a very large amount of racketed speed. According to Dr. Mark Kovacs, it can be up to 40% of your racketed speed at contact. And along with that, it's gonna change your, your racket trajectory to go from straight forward to now curving out on a right, right outward path uh, in the follow through. And this is why, again, we're generating that side spin, this outward path of the racket. And along with that, that timing of the internal rotation is gonna allow us to uh, have a bit of disguise. We can delay that internal rotation to, to generate side spin uh, or internally rate it harder to change that direction to you know, a wide blasting winner. So to recap, using this active elbow extension at contact is bad. Uh, but there are two other things that are gonna stop you from uh, using this internal rotation. The first one is not being completely straight, and the second one is the racket being completely straight up at contact. If my racket is straight up, then this internal rotation is now, instead of driving the racket forward, all it's gonna do is turn my racket outward. So this is gonna uh, uh, decrease my consistency. And as a result, if your racket is straight up, what you'll probably do instead is drag your entire arm forward, which ultimately isn't gonna feel as effortless. And so you want that slight tilt and then internally rotating to drive that racket forward. All right, athletes, this is a really helpful drill that I found to uh, help my students find that correct contact position. And first of all, I want you to start in your serve contact. Your racket is gonna be tilted slightly. Remember, it's in front of your body. Your shoulder's in a nice, comfortable position. And from here, make sure that your elbow is fully extended because you, know, you don't wanna push through the shot. Along with that, you don't wanna push your entire arm, uh, which is called shoulder abduction. You're here from this contact and really nicely focus on internally rotating that shoulder. And after you hit the ball, I want you to see, is your hand still above your head? Are you looking up or are you looking somewhere down uh, below at the court? So just keep doing a few of those. You're here at your contact, internally rotate. Is your hand up or are you coming down? You can alternate between what you feel like you were doing before and this new motion that you're getting used to. And once you feel comfortable with that, we're gonna move on to phase two where we're accelerating into that contact position. So from here, I want you to start in your trophy position and you're gonna accelerate up really nicely and just stop at your contact. So you're here, stop at the contact. And I want you to notice any, any little idiosyncrasies or uh, uh, things that I mentioned uh, that you might be doing wrong. Uh, and if you do find it, for example, let's say you find yourself bent at the elbow or you find that your shoulder is in an uncomfortable position. Well, I want you to pause and I want you to just observe that position and go, interesting. I want you to have the mindset of a scientist and just explore what are the optimal positions because you know this is really a process of experimentation for you and me both. And I want you to gradually start to adjust your contact. Now, as you get comfortable uh, finding that correct contact position, you can start speeding your serve up uh, and this time adding the internal rotation here and speed it up gradually uh, and stay relaxed. Every serve, I want you to pause and see if your hand is still above your head. It's gonna look like this. Okay, that one felt uh, maybe a little bit tight in my shoulder. I could bring it out a little. Uh, that one felt good, actually. <laughs> okay, so uh, just keep doing the drill and uh, you'll, you'll start to feel a lot better with your contact point. Let's talk about the wrist action on the serve. So I like to think about the wrist on the serve as a valve. You've generated all of this force in your legs, in your trunk, in your shoulders, uh, all throughout your body. And now you're trying to transfer it into the racket head. It's like a water pipe. 
you can generate all the water, you can pump in all the water you want to, but if there's a clog at the end, that water ain't coming out. So what you want to do is release that valve. You want to release the water so that it can all come out. And that, my friends, is all happening in the wrist here. So the key here is to keep your wrist relaxed. And according to Dr. Mark Kovac, uh, the wrist is going to be extended uh, in the racket drop. And then right before contact, uh, about when you start this internal rotation of the shoulder, it's going to start to flex forward. And at contact, it's going to be extended about 15 degrees, where it's going to go uh, flex all the way into a neutral position through contact. And the key here is to just stay relaxed in the wrist. Uh, I see too many players tensing up at the wrist and you know, that's just gonna cause you to hit the ball straight up. Your racket string's gonna be facing up and you're gonna dink the serve in. Or if your wrist is tense, you, you're just like, oh, I'm gonna, I got this, man. Oh, I, got, I got this. I'm gonna smash it this time. Oh, wrong box. <laughs> so you wanna keep your wrist relaxed here and allow it to release through. The second move is going to be ulnar deviation and this is basically the flexion of your wrist to the pinky side and that's what's going to allow your racket head to be traveling on its upward trajectory as you hit the ball. Uh, now an interesting note is that on a kick serve you're actually going to have less of this ulnar deviation uh, at contact. Your wrist is going to be angled uh, slightly more which is going to allow you to actually brush up through this ulnar deviation through contact. On a flat serve this only deviation is gonna happen before contact, helping you generate that vertical racket head speed uh, and thus more power. So when you're doing the drill, the key here is just relax the wrist again as you're in the contact position. And I want you to think hit up on the ball. And this, this is the ulnar deviation going on. The racket is going up on the ball for topspin. And combined with this internal rotation, you're gonna think hit out on the ball. So your racket's traveling both up and out as you hit the ball. And if you start thinking of your serve uh, in that way, using that internal rotation, keeping that wrist relaxed, you're gonna start hitting some really consistent, clean, and effortless serves. All right, athletes, if you liked today's video, be sure to leave a like, and we're gonna be coming up with tons more surf videos in the very near future. <laughs> you can't even believe me. There's so much up here that I, I can't even contain <laughs> myself right now. Uh, so, so if you're excited as I am, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification button if, if you haven't already. And uh, comment below what is the biggest thing that you've learned from this video or any adjustments that you wanna see in the future. And until next time, guys, go out and train hard. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs>